Welcome to the Midlife Career Rebel, the podcast created for high achieving professional women to gain the clarity, confidence and courage they need to go after and get the life and career they want. I'm your host, Dr. Carol Parker Walsh, lawyer, social scientist, brand strategist, executive coach, entrepreneur, and midlife career rebel. Each week, you'll learn strategies to manage your mind, navigate the challenges of midlife, and take control of your career so you can thrive doing the work you love. So if you're ready to tear up that rule book and create your own, you're in the right place. And I can't wait to show you how. Hey, Rebels, welcome back to another episode of the podcast. And today I am so excited because we have an amazing guest with us today. Regina Young is not only the host of the very popular and widely listened to podcast, Tea Time Midlife Edition. She's also a best selling author of Overcoming Mediocrity and has so much wisdom to share about what it means to be at this time of your life in the middle of our lives and from a multitude of perspectives, but definitely, you know, in terms of our conversation of what it means in terms of career, career choice of stepping into another iteration of you. And I am so excited that she decided to join us today. Regina, welcome to the (laughs) podcast. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Carol. I'm excited to be here. Cheers. (laughs) (laughs) Cheers. Cheers. You know, we have the information, you know, the, 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 the deets, if you will, are in the show notes, you know, to Absolutely. learn more about Regina. But I would love for you just to share with us your journey, your story, what what got you from where you are to doing this amazing podcast that you do and having this amazing platform where you're helping so many other people in midlife, oh. and women in particular. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the, just the opportunity to speak. I really appreciate it. You know, I'm like everyone else, you know, like when you get to that point and menopause kicks in and you don't know who to go to and you think, oh, the people I can count on are going to be there. But unfortunately, my mother passed away at that time. That's the Mm -hmm. one thing. And my three aunts, they didn't have like, uh, they didn't go through menopause. They had medical conditions that had them not be in menopause. But um, I just really got clear I'm at a high ticket pharmaceutical job and I'm like, people are, you know, they need things and they're, they're wanting me to deliver and I'm going through menopause and I'm like, oh my God, should I quit? (laughs) You know, I was like, should I quit? And I was like, uh, cause I can't keep two thoughts in my head together, (laughs) you know, (laughs) but then I met a woman who was generous in midlife, like myself. She was a little quiet, but she was very successful. And we just started meeting for coffee. I actually make that tea because I don't even drink coffee. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And we would meet at three o'clock and we would share what we were doing around our symptoms. And she would share some things. And I just got to feel that sense of community. Mm. And that is what like opened the door. And the only reason why I started there, because when the pandemic hit, because this is when I came around to creating Tea Time Midlife Edition, Mm -hmm. I was very clear, wow, what if I'm not the only one going through this? Mm -hmm. And what popped in my head was Tea Time Midlife Edition. And that's how I got started. So literally uh, um, in midlife, and even though I you know, had a career uh, working for a pharmaceutical company, what ended up happening is that pharmaceutical company got sold. So mm. I was like, this was a great time to pivot. I'm in a clearing and I recognize it. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. And recognizing that you're in a clearing is an opening to create whatever you ever you know, wanted to do. And that was mm. the, that was the beginning. Yeah. I love that. Recognize when you're in a clearing. Uh, I love that. That is such a great phrase that, you know, you have this space and this opening, you know, the way I imagine it is that this open feel with this opportunity to just take off into something completely new. Absolutely. It's just a space where you can create anything you ever wanted. You could literally silence yourself, sit still long enough to hear your heart talk to you and tell Mm. you what, what's there is to do. And that's exactly what I did. That's so beautiful. You know, and and I love that you, this started just by sitting down in community and conversations. Because I often say that 
for women, we get so much out of being in community with other people. You know, we this, our society is so geared toward individualism and isolation. But I think as women, we really thrive when we're in community and connecting and sharing. And, you know, as they say, rising tides lift all boats. And so yes, when you're, yes. you know, collaborating and supporting each other, there's so much more that we can do and so many much more information that we can receive to really help us. So I love that that the podcast started, but with the two of you all sitting down over tea talking. Absolutely. Community. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So, so, you know, we were talking a little bit uh, earlier about the fact that you just stepped into a new role. Absolutely. Tell you us know. about that. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, uh, during the pandemic, there was that, that period of time where I'm working with entrepreneurs and I was really clear that that's really great. And I'm clear I need community. And I'm clear mm. that, uh, uh, you know, some corporate jobs can be community. And mm -hmm. I saw a role and actually I networked. And that was like mm. something new for me to do in midlife. Because usually I go get my role. You know what I mean? Yes. I, I go get it. But I actually networked. And it really opened up a whole new avenue and a whole new experience. Uh, the, the thing that I think that really made me proud was when I was looking for the community I wanted to be a part of, I wanted to make sure it had the same values I wanted, not just a job for a job. See, in midlife, we can choose something that with our values, we don't have to choose just to earn money because that that's, that's not really honoring your, um, you know, I assert the second half of your life because you mm -hmm. want it to be about something that, you know, sparks your passion you know, and your values yeah. are a great place to start. So one thing I got to say, it did take a while. I mean, my gosh, I think it took all together like five months. I'm wow. not kidding. Yeah, it took a while. And that's, I know it's so surprising because you're thinking five months, you know, most jobs uh, in the past I can get within, let's say a month, a month and a half, mm -hmm. two months mm -hmm. at the most. Mm -hmm. But that's one thing you might find that's new uh, in midlife besides the old formulas that used to work in the past. Like you're like, I've got a great resume. I've worked for great companies. I've got a lot of accomplishments. And you thought, oh, that's enough. Now for some people that may be enough, but for me and my experience, it literally took uh, like three different uh, interviews with three different positions to find mm. the match with the community experience I was looking for and the values that were the same and the same enthusiasm, because that was what I was bringing. That was something you can't quite bottle up on a resume. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I, and, you know, you shared so much wisdom just in this amount of time, because one, you know, yes, it taking five months, but what you're saying is that it took five months because you also took your time in that five months. Right. So, say. you know, like you said, you were looking for where there's an alignment of values, right. It wasn't just about the money, you know, so it was about the yeah. community and the values and where you wanted to really connect in um, to lend your brilliance to at the moment. And that's something I always tell women is that, you know, it's not just about finding a job. It's about, you know, finding yeah. a space where you can, function at your highest level, exactly. right? And where you're plugged in and not only can you get something from it, but you're contributing in a way that makes you feel of value and, and that you're giving value and things of that nature, which, you know, it sounds like that was one of your biggest things, which I really, yeah. and, and networking, right. And not just, yeah. you know, having conversations and seeing what's out, being proactive exactly in the process of getting something to see what's out there, what resonates with you. So those were, those were two big things that I just yeah. wanted to highlight that you said that I think are absolutely necessary, right? In this new way of job searching. Absolutely. You know, and the other thing is to have that continuous learning and I say flexibility mindset. It really mm. is about be, being a continuous learner because mm -hmm. if you stop learning what you basically know got you maybe through the door, but it won't keep you there. So mm -hmm. you have to be uh, flexible enough to be willing to learn something new because, you know, like technology, everything keeps growing. So yeah, so you. totally. I, I would love for you to speak more about um, what you said, which I think was another powerful thing. It's something I've been preaching forever is that 20th century <laughs> 
job search, career development techniques do not work in this new landscape of work and the future of work that that really, and I know it's what we grew up with is what we know, but it does yeah. not work anymore. And we have to take a new approach if we want to go yeah. after doing the work that we love. I would love for you to talk a little bit more about that when you say that the old formulas and stuff just don't cut it. Oh yeah, that is so great. Uh, you know what? I, in the past, I could just say, I accomplished, you know, this at this job, I accomplished that at this job. And they're not asking that question anymore. What they're mm. asking is what kind of technology, what, what, what kind of technical, uh, you know, experience do you have? How did you, how did you make a difference? How'd you, how'd you input did you input things into this this new system did you learn it quickly did you like they want to know technical skill mindset not just can you you know run this software it's like no can you start from not knowing this technology and get up to speed very quickly and i'm mm -hmm. like Absolutely. Did that for a lot of uh, uh, the entrepreneurs because I actually, you know, worked for a, uh, let's say, property manager and he had lots of properties, but I've never worked on a, a property uh, software before, but guess what? I was willing to learn and I could learn very quickly. Mm -hmm. And that speaks to your confidence in your ability to continuously learn. Yeah. And, and they heard that because mm -hmm. that is what they require. The other thing is they check for behavior. You know, I know your past behavior has a bearing on it, but it is, well, what was your mindset when you did that? Like, let's say accomplishment, um, mm. you know, did you learn anything from that? Once you accomplished that, who benefited from that accomplishment? I was like, huh, whoa, I don't think I thought of all that. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so it was really great to, you know, to have three separate interviews. By the first interview, I understood the difference between the past and what is currently being asked of you, you know, yeah. of me. Yeah. Yeah. And that made a difference. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's the thing. I think um, what has been changing, yes, we are in a, in an uncertain world right now yeah. because the pandemic has taught us that if nothing else we have to stay on our feet the utilization of technology because what if we all get sent home again and we have to know how to use it but also this kind of human-centric approach to really understanding who you are and what your contribution would make to the organization just from a human-centric approach like exactly. you know in terms of your beliefs and values and contributions and where you see yourself fitting into the place you know i think are definitely um, what I've been seeing is part of the, the movement and what employers are looking for to really look for matches to people that are come in. But, but I am curious, did, was there ever a thought or did you ever have experiences that maybe some of them had a little hint of ageism to them as well? Um, well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I did get one experience where I was like, I was a little confused. I didn't get the experience of like, you want to know about me, you know, what I can bring to the table. It's almost like it was a formality. Like you are a number in this situation and mm. I need to get this, this, you know, I have to do this, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. And it just, the questions did not land. Like it was almost looking for, I gotcha. Like, I'm going to give you a question that, you know, to me, it was just like, I gotcha. And there you go. Uh, and so it was just looking for a way to kind of, let's say, cancel you out. And mm -hmm. I, I got that experience. So I didn't get this experience of you getting to know me and I'm getting to know you to see if we are a fit. And that yeah. was the real thing that kind of was like, hmm, well, I'll just chalk this up to a learning uh, experience of what questions they are, um, where are they gauging their questions from? Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a really great insight. And I think something to be aware of because ageism is very real. You know, it's yeah. one of the things, you know, while we've been, while progression has been made around a lot of DEI initiatives, ageism, ageism is one that still is problematic because there's a yes. lot of 
myths and assumptions that if you're of a certain age, either you're stuck in your ways or you don't know technology or you yes. are going to come in and not be nimble and flexible or, or things of that nature, which is that they're looking for. So, so I'm glad you're speaking to that, that there was, there was a little bit of sense of that in some of these, yeah. you know, in, interviews that you were having that probably people were coming in with a certain mindset. And I love how you dealt with it, you know, just looking, chalking it up to a learning experience. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And I, actually, I, I cannot remember the study that I saw that the ageism is in all facets of the uh, hiring process. It can be from the resume, too much experience yes. on there to the, um, uh, looking at, uh, you know, the interview itself or, uh, just deciding not to give that person a chance to interview. And, yes. and then on yes. the back end, you know, where you actually get an interview and they just choose to not, you know, pick you and they go with someone younger and it isn't based on experience. It's just based on your age. Absolutely. Yeah. And I do a lot of that in the, the coaching, the program where I work with uh, clients who are putting their resumes together. We talk about how to, you know, make it, almost, uh, you know, it's not, nothing's ever foolproof, but definitely try to make it age proof and, yes. and how to position yourself on your resume so that it doesn't, people can't read into it and then try to disqualify you ahead of time. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I'm curious what, what, if any kind of, as you were going through this process, mindset things that you had to think about or work on or, or, um, you know, to really help you as you went back out there into that process. Yeah. What, one of the things I had to do was uh, give myself some grace and ease because mm. <laughs> you get nervous. You're like, I'm going back out there again. Uh, will they see uh, the, the level of, uh, you know, tenaciousness or, or perseverance that's, you know, in my space or do they see it as like, oh, she's a, she's a career jumper. She's going from here to there, you know, where I just look at it. It's all a continuous thing because they're all mm -hmm. continuous learning opportunities and, and growing. So I had to give up my story of what it would be looking like out there <laughs> going yeah. out there. Oh, I love yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. To I got not just story. be stuck in one way of thinking, but yeah. to really allow yourself to, you know, be more expansive around that. Exactly. And just let some things happen. So that means mm -hmm. I, I may not ha have the ability. I can't predict that. So stop mm -hmm. predicting. Like, yeah, just stop that, you know? And, uh, then at one point um, when nothing was happening, I had to slow down, take a breath and say, nothing's wrong. Just because nothing's happening doesn't mean anything's wrong just means mm. things happening at the moment and they, the, the opportunity might need to get pieced together. And it wasn't, there was the mm. holidays. It broke it up. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> like, so there was things, there was things in place that you cannot predict. So you yeah. have to, just because nothing's happening does not mean something's wrong. And I had to keep moving. So even yeah. though that opportunity is not happening quick enough, does that doesn't mean uh, one egg in one basket. Mm. Oh my God. That is so brilliant. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, because I always talk about that, that, you know, at this stage of midlife, when you're going after something new or you're taking a pivot, that is the inner and outer game, right? There are yes. the strategies and techniques you need to know, and definitely not the old ones, but the new ones, yes. but boy, your mindset is so important. And what you said about stop predicting what you think other people will say, because we yep. do, we sit in this whole thing around, well, what will they think? And what are they thinking? Or what will happen? You know, and we could spend, we could waste so much time trying to get into somebody else's head that we don't even know if that's in their head, that say, we're not yeah. spending enough time in our own heads to get ourselves <laughs> together. And the other thing you said that if things don't happen the way you think that it doesn't mean anything's wrong. It's just yeah. another opportunity to learn and to pivot. And I think yeah. We at, at midlife, there's so many kind of fears and um, uncertainty. And it's so quick for us to say, if something doesn't go the way we plan to say, I knew I was wrong. I knew I shouldn't have went in that direction. I knew, you know, something was wrong with me or whatever. And we just internalize that to think that, you know, it's a sign or something as opposed to no, nothing's wrong. It's just as another learning opportunity to know how to pivot and go after something different. So I love that you said that. A absolutely. You know, 
That is the key because there is a lot of fear. I can't deny in midlife, there's a lot of fear and it takes something to give up the fear. I mean, it's to me, it's flat out a choice. Get busy mm. living or get busy dying. There's only two oh, choices here. There's only two it. choices. Love There's it. That's two. a tweetable. That's a tweetable. <laughs> 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 There's only two choices. So I just choose to get busy living. And that includes being agile and being flexible. And that's how you pivot very quickly when things are you know, not going exactly the way you want. And you get the choice to choose what's next because you are designing your life. That's what yes. you're doing in the second half of your life. You're designing it. You don't have to do it for your mom, your dad, your brother, or your cousin. You're doing it for you. Yes. And that's I think that's some of the most scary thing because we've never done that, right? Yeah, it's, it's, fair first, to it's, say. it's almost the first time we've actually asked ourselves, what do we want? And just becoming into that discovery of that. But I love what you said about... Um, you know, the fact that we get to choose, that we get to decide what it is that that we want to do for ourselves. And I think just really asking ourselves that question to get clear on that is just so important and so valuable. And the fact that, you know, we're not allowing, we get to decide what makes sense for us, right? Exactly. We get to decide the way that we want to move. So I think the things that you share were just oh, so right on and so amazing. You yeah, know, it's, it's so a important. muscle. It's a muscle yeah. you have to develop. You have to continually, you know, you know, keep going inside because what you're looking for is inside. It isn't outside you. That you know, that's not the mm. answer. It's inside you. That's where mm. the answer. Say that is. again. That <laughs> it is not outside you. It is inside you. That's where the answer is. Yes. Yes. And for so many years, we look for external validation to prove that we're on the right track, but it actually exactly. has been inside all along. And the other thing I just wanted to make a, a just really to highlight is when you talked about being agile and nimble and flexible, because that is the misnomer that I think a lot of uh, and myths about people who are aging is that we're not agile, we're not nimble, that we can't exactly. adjust and go with the flow. And that's exactly what organizations are looking at. So the fact that Very you were so. able to pivot in real time just shows how you're able, you're going to be able to do it in exactly. a work situation. So adapting that way of thinking, even in this process, if you're pivoting or coming into something new, being agile, not making it mean everything, not exactly. Exactly. Thinking that <laughs> nothing went wrong, like having that kind of attitude, that is going to help you be successful in landing something. Because Absolutely. that's exactly what employers are looking for is the people who can go with the flow, who can pivot on a dime if something goes wrong, like we just had in the pandemic, that yep. it doesn't mean chaos and craziness or the world's going to end that you know that, oh, that's just another thing. Let me pivot. Let me go to it. So yep, absolutely. Just yeah. you're dropping gold here. You're dropping gold here. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. Love it. Love it. <laughs> you know, I do want to talk a little bit about your book, Overcoming Mediocrity. I love, first of all, I love that title. <laughs> As I always talk <laughs> Unstop about. Unstoppable women. It's unstoppable two parts to women. All, yes. Listen, listen, because I am a big proponent of like, stop settling. Like I think yeah. a lot of times we get into midlife and we get that good, we hit what I call that good enough line where yeah. everything feels good and seems to be going right. You may not be happy. You know, you're not overly joy. You're living this mediocre, mediocre, mediocre life, but yes. it feels comfortable. So you stay yes. and, and you don't really take the chance to like, go to that next level to become that unstoppable woman. Tell me a little bit about that book and, you know, what was the impetus of that and the message that you're trying to communicate through that? Uh, actually, it was an opportunity that came across my desk, a friend of mine who was in the last book, because that is actually a series of books called Over Overcoming Women, o Overcoming Mediocrity. And each component of the book has a different, let's say, uh, title of, you know, like Unstoppable Women, uh, mm -hmm. Influential Women. Like there is a real thing around that. Uh, I saw an opportunity. I said, yes, I'm, uh, I would love to be a part of a conversation where 20 women, you know, had their circumstances not dictate how their life was going to go. And they chose something different. They chose yeah. to be unstoppable. Like, no kidding. This is not going that way. 
Yeah. Um, I share my story of how when I started in New York as a um, plus size model, knew no one, um, actually ended up going to the Midwest and then uh, going and finding my agency in the Midwest and then end up going to New York. Was no kidding. And I absolutely made it to the top. That's wow. because I was like, no kidding. It's not going to go this way, even though I know no one. <laughs> Look. Yeah. I'm going to have it go this way. So you would see me on Essence Magazine. You would see me, you know, Lord and Taylor's, the, you know, runways of New York and everything. But that's because that was a choice. On the flip side, I share, um, you know, and I'm not going to give it all away because no, that's not going to help. It right. really is about sharing uh, just, you know, all the stories because there's many stories besides mine. And, you know, some have to do with, uh, you know, abusive relationships and becoming, you know, unstoppable and not staying in that. Uh, some mm -hmm. are, you know, how they contributed to the community you know, because they had lived through it themselves, you know, uh, yeah. or overcoming cancer. I mean, there's just, it's a whole lot to see. Um, and it's just, it's a great book and a great read. Yeah. But it's so important that I, I, the more that I have these conversations, the more I think it's important that we do share our stories because yeah. there's so many women that feel isolated and like their situation is the only situation and that nobody will understands or, you know, it's so unique and, and I'm not discounting that there are some uniqueness in everyone's Absolutely. situation for sure. But when you can see any level of similarities or get hope from other women's stories exactly. and to hear other women's journeys, it kind of gives you a little something to feel like it's, it's potentially possible for you. And yeah. I think one of the things that we, you know, touched on earlier was this whole thing around fear that usually keeps yeah. us trapped and not going after other things right you know i Absolutely. love that you've had this beautiful beautifully eclectic career because yes. you made choices to say yes and to go after what you wanted and when you needed to pivot you pivoted you know when you saw a need you met it you know i love yes. that you had that tenacity to go after the things that are important to you and that have carried that through in midlife but i think uh so many people are fearful of doing that yeah. And, and that's where I come up with this little ideal of the midlife stretch <laughs> where you have to stretch yourself in midlife or it will be more much of the same. It may look different, but it's still more much the same. It's only through, you know, having your midlife stretch, do some things that, you know, are fearful to you, you know, that opens up a whole new avenue of possibilities. You'd have no idea that you could do until you stretched, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I'm, I'm into the that. midlife stretch. What about, you know, the naysayers? Because I'm sure there probably are a few people throughout your life and career who have tried to steer you in different directions or have, or have said to you, well, that's impossible or try to maybe lower your dreams or lower yes. your expectations. How do you respond to that? Because that could be a big pull to keep us, you know, as I said, like the settling or, yes. you know, the mediocrity of not going after what you want, because we do want our peers to be supportive and encouraging. Yeah. And when you're surrounded by people or you get enough of that external voice is saying, well, is that a good idea? You're in a great job. Why should you change or whatever exactly. the case is? Have you had to deal with that? And what would you say to people who are like struggling with that? Yeah, yeah, of course I had to deal with that, you know, uh, well, around my modeling back then, it was my mother. She was like, mm, yeah, you're going to have to have a plan B or we're not going for this. And yeah. that's, that's how I got into pharmaceutical companies. So it was a plan B and she was right. So it did work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, as I got older at this age, now this is midlife. Wait a minute. I... I, I should care more about my opinion than theirs. And I'm not looking for approval or, or permission. So if I'm not looking for approval or permission, then you're going to have to get to watch me because that's all you're going to get. Because the rest, yeah. I gave myself permission. I gave myself, it's okay. It's okay to try something new. It, it takes something. It really takes something to listen to yourself. It mm -hmm. really does because we we've gone through, you know, whole lifetime of, you know, pleasing people, you know, making sure you stay small. So they feel big, you know, like all that. And I just, 
I've just made a choice. That's all that happened. I made a yeah. choice that no, I'm going to listen to me. I'm going to give myself probation. This is the second half. If it ends tomorrow, guess what? I will be happy with all my choices. Cause guess what? I did it based on what made me happy. Mm, I love that. Yeah. Cause I know as women and women of color, sometimes, you know, the practicality always wins out. Exactly. I remember I wanted to sing opera when I was younger and, and I studied for a while, but my mother was like, no, my, my child, you need a, you need something that's going to pay you money. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that's exactly it. And so of course I, I abandoned the dream and became a lawyer. Right. But, um, <laughs> you know, but yeah, it, it is, you know, when you're young, yes, you know, we get the practicalities, but that can really embed in our minds, even through mm-hmm. midlife. And so when yes. we do have the options to make the choice, to give ourselves permission, you know, because either we have the time or the income to make the choices that we want to make. Exactly. I think sometimes that voice in the back of our heads, whether it's our mom or a peer or whatever saying, oh, now be practical, yeah. um, may keep us from making that move. But I love what you said that, you know, you gave yourself permission to exactly. choose what you wanted to do for your life because tomorrow's exactly. not promised. No, it is not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. yeah. You and do would, have to would... make that choice. You do have to do it. And you, you have to do it now because in this world, it is a bit challenging now. And so being that it's not promised, when is it going to be your turn? And I assert that midlife mm. is your turn. So act like it. <laughs> mm. I love that. Yes. <laughs> so Regina, tell me what does being a career rebel mean to you? Oh, being a career rebel. That's not, that's like not being fearful and being willing to try, um, to expand yourself in different areas, different, uh, uh, let's see, I I would say genres. I know it doesn't quite work for careers, but different areas and see how much you can grow. It really is about seeing how much you can expand and grow and to, um, basically, outperform the last thing you did just Mm -hmm. keep outperforming the last thing it's like you're in competition with you you're not in competition with anyone else but yourself so i think a career rebel is a person who's out there you know expanding themselves and you know outperforming themselves impressing i call it wow yourself wow you love it (laughs) love it love it so Regina, we are going to have the information to, you know, find you in uh, the show notes where people can find that, but where is the best place? Would you suggest that people start to connect with you? You know, Linktree is the best place. So um, it's HTTPS colon backslash backslash link L-I-N-K tree T-R dot E-E backslash T time. T E A T I M E midlife M I D L I F E all one word. That's it. Perfect. Perfect. And again, we will definitely have that link and information in the show notes so that you can quick it, click on it quite easily. Regina, thank you so much for spending this time with me. This has been an amazing and enriching conversation. It has been my pleasure. Really. I enjoy it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, that's it, Rebels, for another episode of the podcast. And I know you're going to want to have this on repeat. There were so many gems that Regina left with us today. Again, her information will be in the show notes. And listen, until next time, have an amazingly rebellious week. And I'll see you soon. Cheers. That's it for this week's episode. Hey, and if you're loving what you're learning, be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe to this podcast so you never miss another episode. Also, don't forget to read the show notes and grab the free resources mentioned so you can start implementing what you're learning right away. Finally, are you ready to unlock your potential and fearlessly go after the career and life you want? Then join me and a community of other high achieving women in midlife, stepping into new levels of leadership, switching it up to do the meaningful and fulfilling work they're meant to do, and glowing up by creating the systems of freedom to achieve their dreams in Fearless, the Career Rebel Academy. You'll find the link in the show notes. Simply fill out the application and together we'll determine if this is the right fit for you. I can't wait to see you there.